Hi everybody, welcome back. In my 20 plus year career of working at global agencies and global corporations as a senior creative leader, I've hired over 400 designers and I've led teams as large as 65 creatives to do the work in those environments. I'm also a designer myself. I have seen what great designers do to stay creative. So today I'm gonna to share with you nine habits of successful creatives. So as a creative, creativity isn't a boundless cornucopia or some sort of endless fountain that showers you as a creative person with creative ideas. Creativity has to be fed and it has to be nurtured. It's so easy to come up dry. It's so easy to get complacent when you're being fruitful. When you have ideas coming in, it's easy to kind of sit back on your laurels and not do the active work that it takes to stay creative. So you have to work at it. You have to practice some principles in order to stay creative. Number one is take care of your body. There's some sort of romantic notion out there that being exhausted and burning the candle at both ends somehow feeds creativity. And let me tell you, absolutely, in my experience, it does not. You have to be rested. Your body and your mind have to be rested in order to be creative. Walking, for one thing, really increases creativity and it's been proven to do so. Also, when you're working as a creative person, a lot of times we're sitting at our computers, sitting at a desk for long stretches of time. And in a way, sometimes creative professionals are sedentary uh, professions to have. So you got to be really careful about that. You want to make sure that you're not sitting for too long. You're not, you know, holding your mouse for too long and kind of developing a repetitive stress injury. You want to make sure that you're getting up, you're moving around, you're going to the gym, you're walking, you're getting blood flowing because you want to combat that sedentary aspect of our profession and getting blood going through your system and through your brain is one of the best ways to stay creative. Now, number two is letting your brain out to pasture. I tell the story a lot and I'm going to tell it again, but there's a great book called Orbiting the Giant Hairball by a guy named Gordon McKenzie. And in that book, Gordon was a creative director at Hallmark Cards for a long period of time. Very talented guy. He tells a story in his book that says designers are like cows. And designers are like cows because all the creativity really doesn't happen in the barn where designers are getting milked for their creativity and their creative products. Where creativity happens is out in the pasture where they're taking in the fresh air and drinking water and eating grass. That's where you get the nourishment of developing creativity. And the same thing happens with your brain. You want to make sure that you're getting out and feeding your brain a huge diet of disparate in-category and out-of-category creative inspiration, film, photography, sculpture, um, design, motion, animation, whatever it is that you can feed your brain with is where your creativity is going to spring from. Number three is you don't wait for inspiration to strike. Inspiration doesn't just strike. It doesn't go off like a light bulb in your head. It doesn't come down like a lightning bolt out of the sky. You have to get out and you have to hunt inspiration down. Inspiration can come from the most unlikely places or doing the most unlikely activities. I get incredible amounts of inspiration when I'm out walking my dog. When I was leading a creative team at Old Navy, my team there developed the biggest selling t-shirt in history. It was the Old Navy flag tee. We sold over 92 million units and generated over $478 million in revenue for Old Navy over a 10-year period of time. I got inspiration for that tea when I was in a thrift shop in Gowanus, Brooklyn, thrift shopping with my wife. You never know where inspiration is going to come from or what impact it could have on your business or on your creativity. Number four is you want to collect visual inspiration like a hoarder. You want to collect JPEGs and Pinterest and tear sheets and put them in Dropbox and put them in physical folders in a file cabinet. You want to collect PDFs. You want to collect packaging. You want to collect t-shirts. You want to collect swag. Collect inspiration and keep it around you. You'll notice behind me when I do my videos, I have these clear clipboards that I hang on the wall. And that allows me to take visual inspiration from magazines and change them out very easily and quickly and I always keep them on my wall and I always change them so I can stay inspired. Figure out a way that you can hoard and utilize inspiration to kind of keep that feeding going. Also, 
Physical magazines are great. That's where I get a lot of the things on the wall behind me. Communication Arts, um, GD USA, How Magazine, I Magazine. There are a lot of physical magazines that can be incredibly inspirational and to keep the old back issues around so you can flip through them. Whenever you're feeling dry, whenever you're feeling just a little bit you know, uninspired, you just pull out an old magazine and just flip through it. You never know what's going to get those juices flowing. Number five is play and experiment. If you're only working on client work day in and day out, that is a recipe for going dry. All work and no play make for a crappy uninspired designer, I guarantee you. One of the things you can do is just play with stuff that you're never going to show anybody. You just do on your own. Throw away design, throw away video, throw away creative, throw away writing, whatever it is. That takes the pressure off and gives you the freedom to try and experiment with new things. So do something that no one else is going to see. Play and experiment. It will increase your creativity. Number six is have a second or third or fourth creative outlet. By having an additional creative outlet, you can feed or inspire your activity in your main creative activity with something else. And what I mean by that is, say you're a musician. By doing art, you can feed inspirational ideas for your music. If you're a dancer, you might be able to feed dance ideas by doing photography. If you're a crafter, you might be feeding your ability to do writing from the crafts that you do. I did a video recently called Are You a Multi-Creative? And as it turns out, it was incredibly popular. And I asked people to share their stories of their multiple creative outlets in the comment section of that video. And if you haven't read those, you should definitely go back and read some. There were some incredible stories that people shared there. But having a secondary or multiple creative outlets on top of your main one is a great way to stay creative. Number seven is perfectionism is a killer. There's something I call the 90-10 rule. You don't want to get stuck in the 90-10 rule in doing your creative work. And that is spending 90% of your time on the final 10% of whatever it is that you're trying to refine to the nth degree and make perfect. Now, I understand there are you know, prima donna perfectionist designers out there who think perfection is absolutely perfect for them. And if it works for them, that's great. But I think that in order to stay creative, you want to make sure that you are practicing not spending your time, what I like to call gold plating. So you don't want to make that thing the absolute perfect thing because I guarantee you 90%, 99% of the clients out there are never going to notice that final little bit of perfection. And it's a waste of your time and it's going to be depleting your ability to stay creative and keep those juices flowing. Number eight is be a lifelong student. The day that you stop learning is the day that you start slipping into irrelevancy. You have to learn to love learning. You have to pursue it. You have to pursue learning like it's inspiration because when it comes down to it, it really is. Learning is inspiring. And when you're not learning, you should be teaching others what it is that you've learned because passing that on and paying it forward is really great karma and ultimately it will come back to you tenfold in terms of creativity. Number nine is welcome change. Change in life and change in creativity and your creative focus is inevitable. It's going to happen. You can be angered by change. You can be frustrated by change. You can be paralyzed by change. But by looking at change as an opportunity, change in your aesthetic focus, in your creative interest, can keep you energized. Look at it as an opportunity to grow and to evolve and to shift and to expand your perspective, expand your creativity. So accept change as a positive thing. So that's it. I hope you like this video on the nine habits that I see practiced by great, successful, creative people. And if you did, please hit subscribe below so you can see my videos when they come out. And make sure to hit that notifications bell so you can hear about it, get an email when I go live or when I post something new. And with that, thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate your viewership. And bye for now.